Floyd Fernandez with Mad Rat Productions. Coming to you live Thursdays at 10 o'clock Mountain Standard Time. Today, I'm going to talk about uh, the uh, my bags that I use for uh, doing my plein air. Talk about a little bit about how I feel about the Roe versus Wade and a little history of me all today with Mad Rat Productions. Roll that beautiful beauty footage. Hello, welcome. Floyd with Mad Rat Productions coming to you live Thursdays, 10 o'clock Mountain Standard Time. Having a little bit of a rough start. <laughs> All my files for the show. Um, got moved into something else and they're gone. I don't know where they went. They were maybe on vacation. It is summertime. I am here in Colorado and everybody's vacationing, I think. <laughs> so what are you gonna do? So please bear with me as it's gonna be another rough, rough show. So what is going on this week? I'd like to start off real quick and just get it not so much out of the way because I think this is going to be something that's going to be a long-term thing, but I don't think anybody should be unaware of my feelings about it, but I totally condemn what the Supreme Court justices have done to Roe versus Wade not only is it a precedent and they lied going through Congress about how they felt about Roe versus Wade, thus in my mind, totally disregarding their whole thing. But I personally, not only is it hypocritical for the Republicans to totally disavow the human individuality, not allowing a person's body to be their choice. I mean, every, every Republican I saw on there was all about not getting their body tampered with, even though it was going to save lives. They were totally against having their body's autonomy violated. But then they turn around and they're celebrating Roe versus Wade going away, which was a big step into having body autonomy. And then the, Rep the Democrats are totally screwing up because they forgot Roe versus Wade was just a step in that a body autonomy, not the final solution. And so they screwed up on their watch. So I don't care whose side you're on, those political leaders have screwed up and they are not doing what they said they were going to do in office. So where does that leave? The final verdict, and the last thing I got to say is like the federal government has already put an establishment on when they consider life, and that's when they issue out a social security card. So I don't understand how the government can come in and make a decision prior to them actually having official notification of life, a person, until that social security card is issued, and they don't do that for pre-born children because in the government's eyes, they're not people. 
until they're born. So until that's fixed and that opens up all legal issues because I think any, if that's the case, then any miscarriage should be allowed fileable under any kind of legal system as a loss of child, which means you're open up to benefits. So I, it, the whole thing is wrong and I support women's right to choose for their body. And let me be right up. I'm a Christian. I believe in God. I believe in a lot of things that don't make sense. <laughs> but that's to help me get through my life, and that's my choice. And that's the whole point, is having freedom of choice. The, like the biggest proverb is the difference between having your head held high when walking into the lions and versus having it hung low, right? It's choice. It's your choice. And God, God gives us the freedom of will to have a choice. And that's anybody who claims to be of faith and forces others who are not of our faith to live by our rules is going against Christ's teachings. So that's how I feel about it. I wanted to get it out of the way. So that way, if you're not wanting to follow me because of that, then this is the time to jump ship because that's how I feel. And I think it's only fair to know that I'm probably going to do some work on how I feel because I not only do I feel like it's my obligation as an artist about the human condition expressing that, but this is a mark on society going forward and it needs to be recorded. And my feelings about it and just the atmosphere of it I need to express that. So I'm going to work on that. So there's that. So let's get on to news. So news. I gotta say, I am still struggling. There we go, news. So what is the news? So, <clears throat> whoa, you do not stop. All right, so in news, I'm going to work on something for Roe versus Wade. I don't know what yet. Um, I'll take you through my process of trying to figure out what I'm going to do, how I'm going to do it, why I'm going to do it. Um, as I try and do with anything that I do, I'll keep you through the process. Need more coffee. <laughs> And try and deal with my feelings about this. It is shocking and scary how this is all going down. Oh, and I forgot to plug in the audio cable to the phone. So that's going to be terrible. <laughs> what are you going to do? <sighs> hey, okay. What's the worst that can happen? So, the little bit of news that I have is that it's summertime. Getting out there in plain air would be awesome if it wasn't so rainy. <laughs> um, 
if you look at the photo I have, because grandma's facing away from the camera, you can get a little bit idea of, of how cute my grandma looked painting, plain air painting in Garden of the Gods, which was awesome. Spelt so good to actually have her just, you know, finally being able to paint with her again. It was a good feeling. And gosh, I hope, I hope I get to do more. Cause it, it's, it was, it was really a good feeling to finally have her back again. And I guess maybe that's a little bit of the uh, going into my history. So let's move into the next topic. Sharing my history. So, history-wise, my grandmother is the reason why I have such a huge passion for my love of art, painting specifically. I think, <laughs> I think really painting is because of her. She's the one that allowed me to pick up a brush and tear into a canvas and allow me to express myself. It was an amazing feeling of being able to have complete and utter control of an environment. I was a very curious child in my youth, and I'd, <laughs> I'll be honest, I took apart stuff all the time. I loved it. It was something that I just was completely obsessed about was how do things work? How do they function? You know, and deep down is because not only did I want to understand, but I wanted to, to be able to do something to improve upon that. And then painting opened up this whole new avenue of not only having something to, to know how it worked and how it was manipulated and how it functioned, but how I could improve this new environment, this new space, this new universe that I was creating. And the control was just so satisfying and enriching and I loved it and I can't not stop doing it because it fills me up in a way that I just I have to I have to do it um, I'm sure <laughs> if it wasn't art and it was something more destructive in my life, I'd be committed. <laughs> but it's not, not yet. So I'm, I'm all about it and I, and I just will not stop. <laughs> that's my life now. So that's the history. My grandmother's, it's all her fault for this obsession. And now my wife has somebody to take out her frustrations out on. Because <laughs> it's all her fault. 100%. So, last but not least, we should go over the bags. So, let's get to it. So, Hopefully, oh, I'm so sorry about the audio on the YouTubes. Sorry about the audio on Instagram. I forgot to plug in the microphone. So, 
bag one. Let's start with something that I've used the most, and you're gonna be shocked with what it is. It's my TARDIS bag. <laughs> Why do I have this in my bag arsenal of equipment to carry around painting stuff? And it's because it's fast, it's easy. It's, for me, it's just hilarious to have this TARDIS on my back because it's bigger on the inside. It's one solid pack. So I can cram whatever I want in here. There's no dividers, nothing to get in the way. Um, it zips up nice, and the padding is comfortable for the weight. So, and that's really important. You're gonna find that the first thing you really need to find in a pack is something that sits on you comfortably. If you don't have that base level, you're not gonna use the backpack. So it's pointless to have it, okay? So, backpack one is a comfortable backpack. Downsides, does not have any functionality for wet stuff. It doesn't carry any tripods. So everything else that I need for any kind of painting session or, or any kind of plein air activity is extra stuff I have to carry on my back. So very big downsides. So that's backpack one. Backpack two that I have and use is this. This is a Timber Ridge Hunter's backpack. Now the reason why I like using a hunter's backpack is because not only is it a large backpack, zips wide open, give you full access, um, but it has at the bottom, the most important thing when you're hauling around stuff around and you're serious about it, is it has a large pass through for Technically, it's for, you know, a rifle, but what I use it for is my tripod. So, general tripod slips into this inner zip-through pocket, hooks up into bottom feed, and wham, instant easy very comfortable they put a lot of extra padding into these because they know you're going to be hauling this around for hours and hours so it adds the extra passage um, nice thing is it's got hydration built in pockets but the outside pockets allow for a lot of extra storage and for my tripod head that i use to hold the whatever items I'm using. So, very useful. So that's bag number two. Oh, and I'll show you my little tripod packs here as well. So, bag three is another kind of specialty bag. But what's nice about this is it has one large open pack. It was free because <laughs> of Doctor Strange. Um, has two front zipper pockets. Uh, and I modified it. So originally, this upper part just was a fabric you rolled up. But I threw in some magnets. Let's see if you can see and actually catch here. <laughs> See? and it catches so now it's easier to roll up so I throw my stuff in I let the magnets catch and boom I'm on my way it's actually become a pretty useful bag to the point where I haven't been using the uh, police box one so much 
But anytime I'm doing real serious stuff, I go for my easel. <laughs> now, I'm talking about backpacks. Why am I talking about an easel? Because I got the Hardy French Easel Pack. So it connects up to your easel and turns it into a backpack. So then that way you're able to carry your stuff on your back and get to those places that are hard to reach. Now, downside, the rings that come with a usual French easel are not really built to handle that kind of pressure and pull from a different direction. It's used to having this kind of pull, but this, it really pulls this way, helping offset the load on your back by putting all the tension on here. So these rings have to be replaced with something stronger or you're gonna have them fall apart on you. Uh, attaches down here on the lower part. So you gotta be careful about how much tension you put down here because if you put too much tightness, they'll pop off the legs. Which, oh, if you, if you hiked and you have anything that jiggles on you and whacks you as you're hiking along, you know how annoying that is. <laughs> so that, I turned it into a backpack. Makes it easier and frees up my hands so I have more space to carry the other things that I have, like an umbrella, table, and a chair. Sadly, I have to sit most of the time because of my lupus, um, but you really should stand when you can. But last but not least, this is a new addition, and I'm, I've only been able to use this for my grandma, <laughs> but it's been pretty comfortable, and I'm excited about the amount of pockets it has. So this is a Sienna plain air backpack. A little on the expensive side, but it has the handles, it has the wrappings, front pocket for an easel, large brush holders, so that way your brushes can actually fit, which you won't find with a regular backpack. They do not take long brushes into account so that is a huge plus and large wide open pockets has a little divider in here for stuff that you carry around and it has inside of it little dividers for your pal um, pallets or uh, boards Downside is you have to have some other system to keep wet stuff from rubbing up against each other. Um, doesn't seem to be have any thought about that part of the process. Um, so that's a little disappointing. And you think for something that's specifically made for plain air painting, they would have included something that would make it easier to carry wet stuff. And I haven't seen anything from them about that. So it's a pretty good heavy duty backpack. Um, the straps are comfortable, lots of padding in the areas that count, lower back and stuff. I, I do have to say that I, I don't like the lower hip strap it's way too thin. You really should have something much thicker when it's gonna be the primary device that carries the majority of the weight on your backpack. So I would have liked to have seen something really more beefy on that bottom part. And probably, I, I modify stuff. <laughs> if it's not working, I'm gonna fix it. So I'm probably gonna add larger straps down here so it better complements that lower part. Um, just to give you an idea what's a really comfortable one.
that Timber Ridge backpack, it has a lower part that you can add on, and this really carries the majority of the weight. Look how big those lower straps are. Very comfortable, but it's hunting, and they know how hard it is to carry all that weight on your back for so long. So having this extra padding, really, really helpful for those plain air trips. So definitely, definitely need to modify the backpack to make it more efficient. So last but not least, I thought I told you I'd show you the easel setup. So I use a tripod, it's a Studix GITC France tripod. Um, it's an older model, so I think these would be really hard to find now. But what I like to do is I take what's a stage cup holder. So this is actually like for microphones and stuff. And so I put that on here. So if I'm doing watercolor or just enjoying <laughs> something to drink, I have a table right here that holds all my materials, an extra shelf, and then I have my mount for whatever I'm working on. This opens up to accept larger papers or my iPad, and that way I can draw anywhere on the fly and it makes it for a really good comfortable position now I do weight this down with some weights like this because it does anytime you make something heavy on top and you don't have that lower center of gravity it can tip and when you're dealing with an iPad on this kind of surface you do not want that crashing down so I usually put a weight down to hold it down so that's what I use on my fly um, hopefully you get something out of that so in conclusion what are things that you should look for when dealing with a backpack comfort and large open packs that allow you to modify for your own purposes. Because <clears throat> let's be honest, if it's not useful, you're not gonna use it. So, and especially if it's uncomfortable, it's not gonna be very useful at all. Uh, I have you had a sling bag before. The problem with them, is sitting on the hip for a longer jaunt really uncomfortable and I don't walk very far I can't anymore I can't hike <laughs> I can't do nothing so for me to find something uncomfortable for such short jaunts really is like a deal breaker for me so but those are the backs packs I use for my plein air sessions and that's like watercolor oil painting and digital art I don't think a lot of people like to do digital art out and about and it's sad to me because I really think that if you're just starting out you need to be drawing from life constantly because you need to know how things look to understand how they should look <laughs> on a page so drawing from life is so important and then when you get good then you get lazy and then you start doing bad habits but if you go out it really breaks you out of your studio mindset and I think it helps you kind of focus a little bit on what's important in a drawing and what's important in a piece of work so get out there draw do do i mean 
this is gonna sound funny, but do what kids do, which is draw anywhere because they're learning to see. And when you're getting back into it and you're trying to draw, you need to remember how to see. So, so important, so very important. So that's, that's my stone and I'm sticking to it. Uh, I hope some of this information was useful. Some of this information um, got through. If there is more questions, leave a comment and I will get back to you if I can answer. If I can't, I usually will try and point you to somebody who can. Um, I follow a lot of great artists, so that I'm sure they have an opinion, just like me. <laughs> Um, thank you for stopping in. I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you have a good evening. Or if it is, I hope you have a good night. And thanks for stopping in. Goodbye.